I am your host, Rodney Stewart. Uh, excuse me, that was my phone, not on silent as usual. Ah, it's amazing how just professional I am when I start to record these videos. Hey legends, welcome along to Here's Rodder's Reviews, the show that loves all things entertainment and shares that love of you. I am your host, Rodney Stewart. Uh, excuse me, that was my phone, not on silent as usual. Ah, it's amazing how just professional I am when I start to record these videos. Um, yes, Hammer Horror. And this movie is Scars of Dracula from 1970. And Christopher Lee is back as Dracula and it's always interesting to see just how they're going to resurrect them in all these films. Now, honestly, it's been so long since I actually properly sat down and watched any of the Hammer Horrors before I started doing the reviews in this series and I, I can remember it just been something that every time I would come across a new one and I'm not even sure at this point I actually should have looked that up before I started recording this episode. How many Christopher Lee Dracula movies there actually are. But that's just... Starting on this year, I'm like... I want to see how they bring him back and how they do away with him again. Because that was just kind of like the, the theme. He would get resurrected at the beginning of the movie. And by the end of it, he would be beaten and killed again. Um, So, in this one, as I say... Christopher Lee is in it, Dennis Waterman, uh, I liked him, he was in a series called Minder whenever I was growing up, really good series, so uh, I had no idea I was actually in any of these films, so it was interesting to see him again, and the eagle-eyed person who uh, is a giant geek nerd such as myself would uh, straight away maybe not recognize him visually but as soon as you hear the voice uh patrick troughton who was the second actor to play doctor who is in this movie as well uh playing the role of clove who is dracula's butler slash slave sort of deal uh yes yeah, so also stars jenny hanley uh michael ripper Christopher Matthews and Michael Gwen or Gwen as a priest that's in it. Basically in this film uh, the way he gets resurrected at the beginning is the film opens up and in Dracula's castle you can see his ashes on this metal or metal stone table sort of thing where he's been killed somewhere along the line now <coughs> I do believe that this box set could be wrong. I need to look it up and get an actual list of all the movies it was ever made. But this is almost like this selection of movies and this box set seem to be like a hand-picked group of movies. Like there's no, there doesn't seem to be any real rhyme or reason as to the the way in which they come out of this box set and like the Dracula movies that I've seen so far haven't been the first one so yes this one here doesn't correspond to the way he died in the last movie that I watched but at the beginning of this one here his ashes are on this stone table sort of thing and it's, you can see his clothes and his clothes and his cape are there as well but he's he's been killed he's been turned to ashes and a vampire bat flies into the room and uh, just pours blood out of his mouth onto the ashes and that resurrects Dracula once again to start his reign of terror once more so uh, in the local village a guy turns up with the, the body of a dead girl who's been killed by a vampire you see the two puncher wounds in her neck and the uh, town folk, the men along with the priest head off to Dracula's castle to finish him off once again and you know 
they go actually just torch the castle clove tries to stop them and he's like you'll you'll never beat him like the flames will never reach my master they set fire to the castle and uh off they go back home victorious while they've been gone the women folk of the village have been taking refuge in the local church and when the guys from the village arrive back they discover that the the woman and everyone that was in the church has been massacred by vampire bats uh, Dracula has had his revenge on them that quickly so we skip from that there to Dennis Waterman and his bride to be more or less and her birthday party and his brother that's a bit of a troublemaker is you know he's lit to the party normally in trouble but he turns up and he's trying to pretend he's 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 not up to anything he's no problems at the minute but previous to going to the birthday party he was in he was having an affair with uh, a nobleman's daughter and uh, she kicks him out of the house in a slight argument you know he realizes he's late for this party he goes to leave she's not happy she thinks he's going to see another woman uh, of course the fight starts he's about to leave her father turns up and uh, his guards go chasing after him so he gets to the party and uh, talks to Dennis Waterman and uh, Sarah Jenny Henley is sorry I got completely distracted by AMDB right there uh, yes he gives her a birthday present and he's trying to pass it off like you know you know, haven't looked anything, you know, I was, I was in it because I was doing night classes, this sort of thing. And uh, at that point, the two guards turn up at the party, they follow them there. So he makes his escape out through a window and he jumps down into the street as a horse and cart are passing and uh, straight through the roof of it. And off the horse and cart goes. And sorry, it wasn't passing, it was parked below. So the horses run off, spooked under the forest and he actually ends up falling off it and he's walking through the forest and he comes across this little village that is the village of the people that were hunting down Dracula and he tries to get refuge there at the bar, the local uh, inn and he's refused the entry simply because He's a stranger. They don't trust strangers. The barmaid was willing to give him a room for the night, but she was more or less attracted to him. That's the only reason she was going to do it. But the owner kicks him out. He winds up coming across another horse and carriage. Two dark horses. If you've seen the past Dragula films, you know what this is. This is Dragula's uh, coach. And he jumps on that. to take some. You know, he's not plan on going anywhere, he just wants to go and have a little bit of a rest until the morning but once he gets in he ends up the coach takes him to Dracula's castle, he winds up on there and uh, of course that's not going to go well so we jump on Dennis Waterman and his bride to be go searching for him, they end up at the the inn eventually find out where he's at cutting a long story short eventually they get to Dracula's castle in the hopes of finding him and I'm just going to give it a quick bounce over here at the end because this video is getting insanely long Clove falls in love with this girl uh, and actually ends up trying to protect her from Dracula and uh, Dennis Waterman eventually finds out what's happened to the brother course he's been killed and it's down to him Dennis Waterman to fight off Dracula at the end of it they skip the hotel they find out exactly what what's happening who Dracula is and whatnot him and the priest decide they're going to go back and fight him off and you know as Bray to be winds up getting dragged to the castle again and we get a final showdown on the roof of Dracula's castle on this farm 
and Dracula uh, doesn't ends up he doesn't get killed by anyone but he does get taken out by a bolt of lightning which sets him on fire mm. dead once more maybe to be resurrected in a later film I have no idea as I say there don't seem to be any rhyme or reason to which way these movies are coming out of this box set I'm just going through opening up the discs the first one comes out this may be in completely the wrong order I'm 100% not sure whatsoever but this movie here does make great use of visual effects and Dracula has got like a sanctuary where he goes to sleep and a safe from entry there's only one entry into this room and it's from outside the castle but it's way up in the air but there's a bedroom that's just above this room where he gets clove to bring his potential victims so during the night Dracula can come out of the one room and you know get up to the room above have a feast get back to his coffin before sunrise and there's an effect in this film where Dennis Waterman is face to face with Christopher Lee in this room and Lee leaves the room to go to the one above and there's an effect of him climbing up the wall from outside looking up towards you know the window where he's crawling out up towards the window where he wants to get to and it climbs up towards the top window and it's so well flipping done and I actually rewinded it back a few times because I was thinking did they do it the same way that the old Batman show from the 60s used to do where they just turned the camera around sideways and the guy would like crawl on his hands and knees as if he was climbing up the wall whenever the images put the other way but the way his cape and things are hanging it's so well done like I think that the there was a hidden line taking him up but it was so well done and the movie is actually it's really good it's really enjoyable Christopher Lee for a change as Dracula has a heck of a lot of dialogue in this film which I really appreciated the last one I reviewed he had absolutely no dialogue in it whatsoever he just kind of like hissed and got on for it but this one here definitely is one worth checking out so go get the box set and enjoy the life out of this film